with me. Nagathon 2017. <laughs> with clever meme, with funny tweet, I'll never leave my office seat. Those who think they know what's right, listen on Sundays to NetHeads, all right? He's got to throw some cold water on this situation. Start talking about nerd stuff. You know, nerd culture is mainstream now. So when you use the word nerd derogatorily, it means you're the one that's out of the zeitgeist. System activate. This is NetHeads with Will Wilkins and Trent Hunsaker. It's a tech podcast. Tech podcast. But we are a sh- ton cooler than your typical geek, giving you the info you need to achieve mega nerd status. Mega nerd status. NetHeads. 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 You guys rock. And now, here's Will At and least Trent. That's- what we tell ourselves to get through the night. Welcome another edition of, actually, it's a very unique edition sure. of NetHeads it's, tonight. It's our, it's our, it, the only thing that we, that we do uh, regularly, regularly at all. There we go. I was searching for the word. <laughs> for, with, with, for, you know, the, any type of consistency whatsoever, if there's anything that's been consistent, it's been the Nagathon. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I don't for even, sure. I don't even remember. I don't remember how it got started, but that's okay. It is, you know, Trent. Eventually, uh, sometimes the people with the knowing just get phased out. At which point, then you just gotta move on, and that's what we're doing. We don't know how Nagathon yeah. started. Yeah, I would. You know what, though, Will, I would ask that uh, if anyone would like to um, work on the the NetHeads uh, wiki page, they could figure it out and and put it in because it's all on oh. the internet. Oh, that's right. The er, Everything is on the internet. By the way, yeah. welcome. Uh, this is another edition of Deadheads. My name is Will. And I'm Trent. If you want to take part in the program, you can. One of my ways, one of them, Twitter. Trent, why don't you Dude. tell them how they do that? Well, you can you can be like our good friend uh, Matthew Corey, Roller Dog NC, our longtime listener. And uh, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Personal friend of the show, Tom Cates. Very easy. Use the hashtag NetHeads and send it out to the Ethernets. Well, I mean, internets. But anyway, fun story about uh, Roller Dog NC. Uh, in the past uh, two to three weeks, I binge watched all of TNG, and I saw True Q, yeah. the episode that uh, Matthew Corey uh, wrote. Well, I, I think uh, it, and of course now you've said his name three times, so I'm sure oh, much shit. like he, yep, Beetlejuice, much like Candyman or Beetlejuice, he's gonna show up on the uh, calls. By the way, which brings me to another point, if you want to. Uh, if you're around and if it's actually running, which of course right now it's not, but I'll rectify that. You it can also be. you can also give us a phone call, uh, 925-238-9020. It's also Yakbet9020, 866-610-9455. But the easiest way uh, and the simplest way is just via Skype NetHeads on air. It is literally just that simple. Trent, what what are you what are you doing there, buddy? Are you working I'm, some I'm ice? I'm fingering my ice bottle you have, to get okay. some more ice out. <laughs> Sorry, I, I should be switching over to this, but of course, once again, I've lost my mouse. There we go. Uh, so you have an ice bottle. So you're like, okay, the ice dispenser is upstairs. Yeah, exactly. And- you got to you gotta plan ahead. And I figured anything that melts, I can use for hydration, which is probably going to be needed. I'm ah. not going to lie, Will. I've been, I've been day drinking well, no, Trent- like, since I woke up at noon. Trent, unless you're on the clock, I don't think it's called day drinking. I think it's just called drinking. Oh yeah, I've just been drinking. Okay, very good. Nothing during the day. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, we all do. Technically, with... I mean, for my circadian rhythms, it was the morning. Oh, okay, very noon. good. So really, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you just you just poured yourself a glass of breakfast and saw what was on the telly and went from there, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. I fully accept that. So you know, I I got to respect your pregame, sir. I I I, I salute you with the uh, honorary. This is, I think, probably my favorite my favorite Christmas mug that we've got of anyone. It's a good one, BT Dubs. Yeah, because you set it down and, and it's Santa on a head stand. The only problem is you're you're I don't know want to know where I'm sipping out of. His his uh Rectum. posterior. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. But yeah. anyway, uh, so folks, the idea here, what is a knockathon? Knockathon, it's actually, shockingly enough, it is just another episode. But it usually involves something that that at least uh one of us normally isn't doing during the podcast, which is drinking. I think. Yes. Yeah. And and 
on my end, it's drinking t- enough to actually uh, make a dent. <laughs> I've, you know, I got to tell you, I, 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 I am so glad of any episode of uh, NetHeads ever. This is the one that 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 uh, Kevin Smith Smith decided decided to tweet about. Because boy, are we off to a rip roaring totally. start. By the way, uh, yeah, I, I noticed you do have a, a type of clan there, which is good. But it is a, a and you know what, folks, I, I'm I don't mean to uh, make it sound like you have to drink eggnog to do this. No, no, because for me, dairy and alcohol should never be mixed. Fair Ever. enough. Well, you know, because it does kind of sound like it's something that would make it curdle, right? I mean, you, the thought well, of adding it, it, some type of thick, creamy substance to your alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so many places I want to go with the joke that I'm not getting here, though. I'm sorry. Um, let me rephrase. No, it's OK. It's OK. <laughs> no, the, for me, it all goes back to the Loganowski, which is, was uh, was a regular uh, Big Lebowski event we had here in Logan and the drunkest night of my life. Um, and apparently I, I vomited all over a gaming table and uh, well, got into a yell- yelling match with a woman and tried to walk home. I. I'm told. All I remember is waking up in my backyard next to Sherman and Spencer Oper being like, dude, are you okay? So I, essentially what you're saying is uh, the white Russian is not for you, so <laughs> no. let's steer clear of anything no. that involves dairy in that. And so that's why tonight uh, we're, uh, at least myself, I'm I'm uh, enjoying a nice bottom shelf scotch, Klein McGregor, and uh, also, uh, just to mix it up, you know, also going with a sugar cane rum. Uh, from Brazil, also called uh, cachaça, uh, very delicious. Uh, Is on high and uh, it, it, uh, it pungent stings the nostrils. Because I know whenever I want to sit b- down and relax, the one thing I always wanted to do is uh, is uh, enjoy singeing my nostril hairs. Yeah, I mean it's so ethanol in Brazil is made out of sugar cane, and so it's kind of like drinking gas. Oh, nice. Well, there you go. Yeah. So you so you could uh, drive your car or you could get drunk. Totally. Either okay. or. Fair enough. Tomato, Tim Ado. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, that's the way uh, that's the way I learned it growing up. Uh anyway, folks. Uh so and I think in years past we we've titled Nogathons, we've you know, we've incorporated crowds and and music, but the problem is now we've incorporated video, so it's very artificial to try and create the radio theater experience of of us having a Christmas party and also uh for uh reasons that I'm sure we're end up going to discussing. The last thing I wanted to do was plot out any sound effects for this. Just us and 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 whatever it is you want to drink like trent is is uh he's working some some energy drink in there mm-hmm. so he's got mm-hmm. some sugar and some pick me up with his clan mcgregor and whatever else mm-hmm. he decides to throw in there mm-hmm. uh people also missed you fingering your ice bottle from the first oh, time oh i they, did yeah they I'll, don't, don't worry that. i'll finger it later which is good though because yeah. it, it shows your thinking ahead i've just got one glass of of anything and that's it i have nothing else for this but please well, I, the, you don't have to drink someone the eggnog. needs to be in control uh, that's true. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, you know. So if you do want to partake, if you want to uh, chat along with us, uh, you can do so on Twitter, as Trent said, hashtag NetHeads. Feel free to drink anything you want. Uh, yeah. And also, I just decided not to restart everything, Trent. So the Facebook peoples, can they can take part as well still. Nothing oh, well, change. I'm going to change my update then. That's okay. Delete it. Yeah, just delete it. It never happened. Yeah. Just like so many other things. Uh, yeah, somebody <laughs> asked, uh, I, I think it was, uh, or was it, is it Randy Chang? Is that his name? R. Chang? Yeah. Uh, who, who, yeah. Who who purchased, if I remember correctly, um, ABC, uh, the graphic novel uh, from Death Ray Comics way back when. Way back, way back, way back in the day. Uh, yeah. he, and he asked, was there going to be any Foley work on this show? Because um, obviously, I guess I recently did something right <laughs> because, uh, you know, this 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 doomed failed experiment we want to call a podcast uh, actually got re got tweeted by uh, Mr. Kevin Smith. I don't know if you noticed yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing like it. Boy, that must be nice. You here? You've had a day of drinking, and and then just like suddenly, oh look, there's a look at this tweet here. Yeah, yeah I was like, hey, I know that guy. Well, I mean, not biblically, but I've met him before. I've, you even have a picture with him. I've seen yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I probably what that is. I, I'm probably. I bet you it's probably <laughs> the only thing you remember from that day. Anyway, um, yeah, it was high stress. <laughs> High stress, high energy, high octane, all of the above, right? Uh, anyway, uh, so recently, uh, I don't know if you you have caught up with it yet, Trent, but 
um, in the quest for uh, filling the empty seat of his bro, Scotty Moe, Kevin Smith, uh, a few episodes of Smodcast ago, decided mm-hmm. to instead give us an, uh, as he put it, an oral treat and oh, and yes. read uh, his uh, f- the first script from the miniseries of Hit Somebody. I don't know. Yeah. Did you catch that, first of all? Yes. And, and I'll be honest, it was very reminiscent of one of my favorite Fat Man on Batmans when he read from uh, the uh, a couple issues of JLA. Yeah, that was Rock of Ages, I think was yeah. the yep. and I can't believe I remembered that. Uh but and, and it was a great read. It actually his his read was so good and his conviction and emotions from it were oh, so good yeah. that yeah. It, it compelled me to to buy the compendium, the you know, the put together graphic model. I think from Death Ray Comics, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's true. You're such a liar. I didn't buy anything from Death Ray ever. What a prick. Uh anyway. <laughs> Uh, so, so, uh, I, uh, that happened and, you know, he even made uh, a little play in there about like, oh, you know, I, I, I was even thinking I could do this, but you know, you're talking to the guy who was just like, ah, it's good enough. So <laughs> he didn't do it. And there was this one part in the description and, and for, uh, without going too deep into it, uh, there is a, a battle on in world war one. Right. And correct uh, during it, it's described that. So basically one Canadian gets into a fight and then the other Canadians join in and they end up having so much fun during it that they get into a, a wonderful song of Oh Canada as they're ac- accentuating the song with the punches and kicks. And I'm like, what would that sound like? <laughs> and, and, and that was the big mistake because mm-hmm. I shouldn't say mm-hmm. mistake. It's been amazing, but uh, I, I have newfound respect for anyone that does what they call Foley work, adding oh my God, sound yeah. effects in. Because you, yeah. you you're uh, you're entering an entire uh, new realm because you're you're painting a, a mental picture and totally and uh, yeah, by the way yeah if you've ever tried to figure out what kind of ambiance to put in a hotel room from the seventies Trent this is the kind of question I've had to answer let me ask you though let me let me ask yeah. you so yeah. you're, you've got to try and find one quintessential sound that can run in the background the whole time what is it um uh uh maybe maybe like a uh, it's it's the seventies, so a uh, window AC unit or one of the in wall mounted ones. Excellent. Yeah. Same yeah. direction I went, friend. Okay. Good. Uh, good. 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 So anyway, I'm not saying this to toot my own horn, but it's probably the only reason why we we ended up getting uh, our episode here of Nongathon uh, tweeted, and it's also the reason why I have absolutely no interest in trying to do any quirky or funny sound effects. You know, it's just because uh, you've been doing it a little bit. You know, uh, uh, what did they say? The cobbler's kids. And shoes, yeah, never like have that. shoes, and the and the and the yeah, and the uh, the butcher's uh, family are vegetarians. There you go, there you go. So so anyway, uh, so that's the reason why none of that's happening. But I got to tell you, it's been it seeing the reaction online has been great. And the other thing too that I found interesting is that, and I didn't realize this until after the fact, but I realized Trent, I've been directed by Kevin Smith. Yeah, I have. Yes. I've taken direction from him. Well, and, and I, I would also say not, not only your creative endeavors as a fully artist, but also as an editor as well prior uh, to this, even, I, yeah, some instances, but you know, not a, not a whole, oh yeah, I guess, you know what, for, you for episodes, I, for episodes. I, I, here I thought I was all excited. I'm doing something new and cool. And you're like, no, well, I got to tell you, that's the same shape you've been doing all the time. No, 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 no. It's different because now, <laughs> now instead of just like cutting stuff and, and, or, or, you know, putting this, that and dropping stuff in, now you're able to, to dive into those Bocephus juices and, and get them flowing. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, no. What does Bocephus mean? Well, it's, you know, your creative juices. Yeah. Okay. Um, I not I, not in like procreative juices, oh, okay. which is something else. I was I was wondering where you were going with yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I don't know. Uh, did the audio was the audio out when we were talking about the awesome Santa? Where I'm not sure I'm drinking from, but this is what I'm. It was consuming my beverage from. I love the fact though that you're you're mixing alcohol with energy drink because you're like I'll be yeah. goddamned if I'm not going to turn out one hill of a knockathon night. Got to, got got to stay, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to be here, man. You know what I'm saying? I understand completely. So, um, so, uh, that whole thing happened. It was great. It was lots of fun. It is amazing how much work goes into it. Um, so that, but that was really exciting. Uh, and much in the same way that you just redefined something for me now, Trent, uh, making me realize actually, well, you've been taking direction for a little while. Uh, it, it kind of reminds me of something else. So I just want to switch gears unless you had any questions on the whole uh, Foley. No, thing. just, just, I'm going to, I'm going to tweet out a link here. Uh, there's a great podcast called 20,000 Hertz 
And they did an episode all about Foley work and they went in and talked to a bunch of Foley artists and stuff. It's if it's something that, that is kind of, you know, you're interested in, it's definitely worth listening to. Oh, excellent. Thank you, sir, for that wonderful yeah. uh, bit of information. And actually, uh, for me, too, I'm I'm now at the point it was uh, the other thing I can tell you about the experience, which is funny for me, is that it's very much listening to the story without hearing it. I guess is the best way mm, to put it. Okay. Like I yeah, yeah. finally, I didn't think I would ever go back and listen to these having heard them so much, but it yeah. turns out there are a lot of elements I just didn't listen to because I was so in the moment. Um, so that was a unique experience. The reason why I mentioned that is because earlier today we were having our annual watching of uh, love actually. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I assume you've seen this wonderful British film from 2003. Now this, uh, no, no, because I, I think the, the best rom-com from, uh, the, it, it, based in Britain with, was, and always will be Notting Hill because will you understand I'm just a man on the other side of the internet, looking at you through a webcam, asking you to love me. How do you, how do you answer for your crime, sir? Uh, I don't know. It, I, 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 at another date when I'm more coherent in thought, I can explain why rom-coms might be the greatest genre of all time. Wow. I uh, yeah. Suddenly I want to abandon Nagathon and I want to travel down that road yeah. with you, my friend. It's all, it's, it's all, about, um, it's all about ascension in, in social strata and classes. Um, you know, you've, like, it's, it's always someone ascending to a higher social class. Um, and it's very interesting when you, when you uh, take a step back and look at it from that, from that uh, aspect. So I was having my annual <laughs> rewatching of uh, Love Actually because it's very yes, yes. Christmas eccentric, and you know, it's I, my wife and I, we like to watch it together. We love the movie. It's got the great late Alan Rickman in it. I mean, it's oh, got an all star yeah. cast. I mean, Rick, 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 Rick Grimes is there. You know, yep. uh, the guy that was the assassin on Serenity, he's there. I mean, there are so many, and, and uh, Arthur Dent, or um, whether you want to call him Arthur Dent, or, or you want to call him, uh, Jane, or well, Dr. Watson, I can't remember what his first name is, yeah. John Watson, you know, whatever you want. He's in it too. Great movie. Uh, but uh, it, so uh, unfortunately, I don't think I can actually convey my sense of wonder and dismay that I had watching it today. Because mind you, I've seen this movie at least probably a dozen times, which is probably far less than a few people. Um, but there is a, so are you not like, you seriously don't even know anything about this movie. I, I remember it being recommended to me and I, and I think we've talked about it in the past, but I also know we've talked about, um, Oh, what's the singing one that, that, uh, that you've told me I need to watch. Oh, pitch perfect. That's not pitch even, perfect. The, that's not even, that's really not even in the same like wheelhouse. Not even, not at all. You're not even. I mean, I'm talking spaghetti, and you're talking Gorn, Gorgonzola, man. Come oh, I on, do love the, I do love the Gorgs. Good to know. Glad to know that. I mean, really, I, it. My heart is full. So anyway, it, there are all these different stories going on in here, right? And one of the story because it's obviously it's a it's a rom com, or I don't even know if it's a romantic comedy, but it's also one of those stories that's written where we're seeing all these different people, and they all kind of have interconnectedness, right? Yeah, kind of like Crash, but not Crash. Yeah, exactly. Like Crash, but not Crash. Um, so in this case, there are all these different stories, and there's this interesting one where there's one minute detail that I completely missed, right? And the moment I did, I j first I started bawling at that moment, and then from the moment the next big pivotal scene in that story happened, I started bawling again because it completely redefined the experience for me, right? Yeah. Let me tell you what it is. Something really stupid, but anyway. So, of all the character stories, one of them we follow is uh, Liam Neeson. Okay. Oh, how, yes. How yeah. big is it? Um, and in that, it's uh, he's starting off the movie, and unfortunately, he's having to bury his wife. Right. Uh, it's her oh. funeral, and he's mm. got he's got his son Sam, and he's having trouble connecting with Sam because Sam's always locked in his room. And then they finally start talking, and it, he admits he's in love, and there's this girl he's infatuated with at school. So he then, I mean, he's doing everything to help enable this kid and move him along towards his goal, right? You know, you just need one great moment and all this jazz. The kid finally comes up with a plan and he's learning drums for the last two weeks of Christmas so he can play drums behind the girl who's singing, who's in love yeah. with. 
Yeah. So there's all this stuff and the, the things he's going through. And then later on, when they're at the airport chasing the girl, because you got to do that at least once in every run. Oh, and, and whoa. And, and in Britain, you could probably could do that in 2003. I don't know. No, no, no. I, I don't know. No, there was still no security. Idea. The kid was running okay. through, but they were really casual when they were uh, throwing the cuffs on him. Well, um, you know, they were they were white. So, yeah, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Mm, uh, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, Boy, you really have had a few, haven't you? I'm just saying, like, it's because everyone's racist. Yeah, very much so. Anyway, neither here. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and, I, I, and by the way, Trent, I, I'm sorry. It just disgusts me to hear any type of racial intolerance like this. You know, it's just exactly, it's just horrible. I mean, it's kind of like, it, just like the Lithuanians. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. Wait, what? Couldn't realize. I said, it's just like the Lithuanians. You know what I'm saying? kidding though uh anyway yeah, so yeah <laughs> so let me get back to the rom-com because i gotta tell you it was just so stupid that i missed this detail later on there at the airport uh liam neeson runs into something else someone else because of course naturally uh we got to start him on a romantic story too because his wife's dead so that we want a happy ending by the end of the movie right when this I, happens I, go ahead no i know no you, i i i turned it down because i was fingering my ice hole oh okay i thought you were going to tell me uh, how you were interested in, in something for Liam anyway. Um, oh yeah. And involving a happy ending. I think he always has a happy ending. Yeah. Just depends but on I'm, what don't... zip code. Um, so, so anyway, he runs into it and says, Oh, you must be Sam's dad. And I've never caught this before. He says, no, uh, well, stepfather actually. And then it just, I got floored because that literally redefines everything about this. Cause now instead of this dad who, who's worried about his son, this is a guy whose wife has passed away and it's, it's, and forgive me for putting it this way, but really it's her child. So now he's got no oh. wife and her kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's looking to make a connection. He's worried about the kid. And now he's going to these great lengths to, to help this kid in his romantic pursuits. And it was just like, and everything he gave, it just blew me away. I was just blubbering like a kid. Have you, has there ever been anything in a movie like let's say you love and there's just one detail you missed and it just like it it just blew you away. Oh man. Yeah, I I I know there is. And 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 upon watching you rewatching you you finally get it. I can't think of anything offhand. I'll, I'll tell you one because I never caught it in the theatrical yeah, run. Yeah, please. Back to the Future near the end I never caught the sign saying Lone Pine Mall for probably the first 15 viewings. Wait, in, in which Back to the Future? The original one. Marty comes okay. back from the, he goes back to the past, or he goes to yeah. the past, doesn't go back to the past. Right. And remember, old man Peabody had this crazy notion, breeding buying trees. Yep. So Absolutely. as Marty's racing out of there, he runs over and says, you space bastard, you killed my pine, blows the gun, mailbox explodes up in the air, right? And then yeah, he goes right. back, when he goes back to the future, uh, the, uh, the time machine DeLorean won't start. He runs to the mall. He comes running down and he goes up to the lone or to the twin pines mall sign. And right. It's now the lone pine mall. Oh shit. I never knew that. Okay. Well, Trent, great news. So, uh, I was saying, has there ever been a movie you've seen a bunch of times? <laughs> yeah. It's revealed. Oh my God. And it redefines everything. Yeah. I'm, you know what? I'm going to have to rewatch that. Yeah. And, and it's interesting though, because it's, uh, if, okay. It's not really interesting to anyone else, but it is kind of to me because, uh, the second back to the future movie, when you think about it, it had all this stuff about, you know, alternate timelines and alternate right. realities really. And the movie itself kind of introduces that in the first one. Right. Yeah. Holy, you're right though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, it kind of already did yeah. anyway, cause doc had the bulletproof vest. Now Marty suddenly got the nice car. My favorite, but as by the way, my favorite article. From an old issue of Starlog, if you guys remember this. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was an article about the other Marty because they were saying that, you know, with alternate timelines, in right. theory, that original timeline still goes. So you got to feel bad for the other 1985 Marty who left Lone Pine Mall to arrive in Twin Pines Mall because I right. guess that Marty is able to drive better. And yeah. instead, he finally somehow gets back to the future. He's got a dead friend. He's got a skateboard instead of a car, and his parents are losers. Yeah. Oh, I guess, I guess that's kind of like Luke growing up in the, in the desert and uh, totally his sister gets to grow up and be a fancy princess, right? Yeah. Wait, that, 
that did happen. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, not really. They're not see just like, and that's the real is that's the same thing I said to my wife as I'm bawling my eyes out. Cause I'm a parent and I'm like, Oh my God, look at he's doing for these kids and everything else. Aww. I'm like, Oh, he redefines everything. I can't believe this is so sad. And then the last thing I said, and these people don't really exist. <laughs> you know, uh, Richard, Bach in his uh, masterpiece novel Illusions, The Adventures of a Reluctant Messiah, uh, talks about how, uh, you know, fictional pe- fictional characters are a lot more real uh, than real people are in most cases. So just something to chew on. I completely agree. And it's funny you bring that up. That was, uh, you know, it, Trent, can we can we get a little like it? Can we wax? Because this is the last time we're probably going to be doing dude, this through the end of the year, right? Let's let's wax philosophic, man. I'm not even going to wax the, I got the Bocephus juices flowing. I know you do. What does Bocephus mean again? It's the creative juices, not procreative. Okay, yeah, sorry. I, I got <laughs> hung up on that last detail. But no, no. Um, I don't know. Hey, look, uh, with the with the Last Jedi coming out, right, you know, it, it makes people ask a lot of questions. And one of the things Star Wars fans have always been able to say is, well, you know what? Th- that's the force. That's the force at work. Okay. You know, it's like, how is it possible? All these characters come to, to the exact same place at the exact same time and, and impact it. When, oh, well that's the, it's the force. It's what the force does. Right. Yeah. So Star Wars kind of does that. Uh, and, and, and you're willing to roll with it. Right. Yeah. So, uh, in many ways though, I wonder if that kind of stuff plays out in real life because if, you know, if you think about it, uh, it, it's a little weird that around the same time that I just happened to change the Radio Askew logo to look very similar to a writer, director, comic book, direct, TV direct, you know, a guy you may be very mm-hmm. familiar with. Mm-hmm. I changed the logo of that podcast. And shortly after that, some guy just randomly follows it, happens to see a message, calls in. Yeah. Not only does that conversation go well in a, in a, in a mutual hosting partnership is born, but bizarrely enough, both of those individuals, one of their favorite books is Illusions. Not even Jonathan Dude. Livingston Siegel. No, no, no. It, it's okay, but but Illusions is by far the better work. Right, exactly. So it's just, it's kind of amazing to me if you think about it. Isn't that a bit more of a coincidence than you would expect? To, to, to quote, <laughs> Illusions, like attracts like. Wow. You know, I'm starting to think maybe I need to go back and re- do a little reading. Oh, you're uh, you're spouting some parables, sir, that that I'm finding mighty powerful. It is it is uh, that and Stephen King's On Writing are the only two books I read every year. You know, I keep meaning to meaning to read Stephen King's On Writing oh, because I've heard God. that it's it's both a great read about writing as well as his kind of. Uh, journey into totally accepting why his accident had to happen pulling himself out of the funk of that and all that jazz is that true yeah exactly it's 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 like um maybe uh one third process or you know his personal process and then two thirds uh autobiography oh okay there you go well then that sounds like it could be a really interesting read it's amazing I, i like any anyone that's that's interested in in doing anything creative whether it's writing painting podcasting if you can call that creative oh i, defi- um, I definitely call it cre- let me tell you no 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 i definitely call it creative here's the reason why i call it creative Trent. okay <clears throat> here's the reason why it's very simple very simple uh, i was even thinking about this when i was getting into the shower today um i'm sorry Ooh. yeah you were kind of think, on my mind am i kind of on your shower. mind I'm, I'm into that that's cool it's hot mind. But I was thinking about that because, you know, like last weekend, people asked you, is there going to be a show? And, you know, the timing just didn't happen, whatever. And the times it doesn't. But and other people are like, well, you know, if you want me to sit in and we've had guests. But when it comes down to it, um, if I'm sitting here with anyone else, I'm recording a podcast. When I'm here doing this with you, I'm talking to my friend. And that just happens to coincide with us recording a podcast now. Totally. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It really is. I mean, you know, because like back, okay, look, back in the day I did Radio Skew because I wanted attention. You know, it was, look, it was 2005. It was a crazy time, man. All right. Podcasts were just getting started. Yeah, it was a brand new thing. The publics were just getting into it. Uh, So yeah, I was doing that just to do a podcast, but now if it, like, honestly speaking, if we were kicked off of uh, smodcast.com tomorrow, I would still be interested in doing this. I wouldn't care about, and uh, at least, okay, look, it would, it would hurt. 
there would be pangs. Okay. It, it would. It would not be surprising, though. No, not at all. I'm amazed we're still here <laughs> as is. But uh, it, it definitely, I would, I would keep doing this because I enjoy Trent. I enjoy doing it with you. As do I. It's a good thing we kept just enough silence on either end of that, so uh, we can really repurpose the shit out of those later, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it's a good thing if we're doing video. If the video wasn't on me, I was doing, I was doing like finger with the. Fi- like the circle finger with the, the pointer finger going through it, you know. Oh, believe me. Sex. Believe me, I let him see it. Uh, okay. Randy, by the way, Randy Chang wants to know, did you ever see the Red Nose Day reunion for Love Actually? It, well, he said the Red Nose Day Love Actually video, but I think it was kind of like a reunion thing as well. It, the only thing, and it was just missing Mr. Alan Rickman, of course, because he's bad. Oh, yeah. But anyway, uh, no, I haven't seen it, and not not for lack of trying or or lack of interest. It just never happened. I've had I've had some more interesting shit on my mind lately. Like Trent, I don't know about you. Uh, I I have seen the Last Jedi. Oh, as have I, sir. By the way, I'm lying. I do know you've seen it. I've been meaning to I've been meaning to ask you a question about this now, because I'm wondering if it was a typo or if this is something in line with. Uh, your thinking yeah, and yeah yeah yeah. trent if may i quote you on your thoughts Please. about the film yes yes it, I, I know exactly where you're going and i want to go there okay good now by the way uh let it be said uh folks we're talking last jedi for a few minutes so definitely gonna be some spoilers sorry about that um and i also want to say that uh i loved the movie i just want to put that out there right now it gave me everything i asked of it i went in i was entertained from beginning to end, sure, there may have been some things that kind of took me out of the moment for just mm-hmm. a brief, yep. nothing's perfect in this world, No, but no. I was entertained from beginning to end. And best of all, I, just like Empire Strikes Back, I did not see where it was going. I didn't, I couldn't tell what direction they were taking me. I didn't, they, they, they kept me guessing. So it yeah. played out yes. quite well. Right up to the end, right up to the end. Yeah. So, so anyway, in that respect, I love the movie. So I asked Trent. And his, his take was, it is, let me credit to you so we can see it, my mm-hmm. favorite of the prequels. Yes. Yes, it is. I am, and I, I, I asked for clarity on that statement. I received none. So Trent, I have to ask you, what the f- does that mean? Okay. Okay. Now, uh, uh, the prequels, right, were bridging a gap between uh, generations, right, in, in Star Wars. Like, you were bringing... Uh, now it's up to four, but at the time, at least three generations of Star Wars fans together, right? And so uh, it was a movie that was um, trying to, and I, I, I believe this, the prequels were trying to give a plot and story geared towards um, adults with characters and uh, asides for kids. And I feel like uh, this is the first film that actually gives um, enough to everyone. Like there is something in the last Jedi for every single fan, if they're willing to accept it. <laughs> whereas, whereas, well, I, whereas the prequels, like, like this is a plot story that, that can engage both adults and kids. And, and there are uh, characters in here that engage both kids and adults. Whereas the prequels, it was binary. It was one or the other. I understand completely now, because even though it happened to click with certain, uh, all ages, the original yes. Star Wars yes. trilogy, if you will, didn't really skew that direction. Yeah, it got a little ridiculous in Return of the Jedi. I'll say it. I'll admit it. Did judge yeah. me. I don't care. Um, but but with this one, I, I can see that because yeah, there are elements of everything in there for everyone. So I kind of get. It. So you're not you're not putting it in the same category of quality no. as the prequels. No, nope. no, nope, not at all. Not at all. I'm 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 looking at intent, and I think it it succeeds where the prequels did not. Excellent. I, you know, and I think, I think, uh, you're, you're right. Uh, although, um, before we get into our thoughts on the movie, I have to ask you, what is your take? If any, if you have any whatsoever, uh, by yeah. the way, uh, no, don't forget folks, if you want to call in, you can, uh, net heads on air via Skype easiest way. Um, sorry, uh, Matthew, Corey, you were calling when we were trying to get things going again. Yeah, but call in. It wasn't anything against you, sir. Yeah. Call uh, back in. Uh, anyway, the, uh, the, the thing that, uh, that I find the most interesting about this movie, um, and, and, uh, the thing that, that I, I just 
am most amazed by is that as a person that was uh, coming in, Ryan Johnson is who I'm talking about, to kind yeah. of continue mm-hmm. this story and to write it and to work conceptually with what they wanted. It's really interesting how much the movie basically says, ah, screw all that to all the old stuff from the movie right before. But that's not right. what I wanted your opinion on. There's this this thing going on with Rotten Tomatoes right now where <laughs> the movie yes. is certified fresh. But, by critics, by critics, but the audience yes. reviews are in the toilet. It's like yeah, fifty-six and there's, or fifty-four percent. And there's even there's even been an alt right movement to uh, to drop its rating as much as possible on Rotten Tomatoes as well. Now, the other day, I'm not saying that Google News is the end all be all portal for connecting me with all of the truth sure. that is out there. Sure, but um, it gives you a highlight and a breadth of of what's going on. And I did see that uh, they basically Rotten Tomatoes was was commenting and saying how they believe all of the voting is is accurate for whatever that means. But you're saying you believe that there is like there's been some theory that there's like some 4chan uh, activity yes. trying to to yes. screw with things because and, it, and, for, for those and, of, and, and to be and, clear, and, the and, reason but, why this is is so important is because these audience ratings are in line with, as Trent mentioned, the prequels. Yes. So that's yes. why that's kind of a point to to bring up here. Yeah, it, uh, it's 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 interesting too because there there are even, in my opinion, hilarious. Uh, uh, attempts at uh, petitioning, um, you know, the the creators to strike this from canon. Um, sorry, uh, the ending is pretty impactful. You can't just pretend that it didn't happen. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You can't. And the thing that I I have to wonder about these movies, I don't really understand. I, I mean, I don't know what people are upset about unless. It's because it didn't give them exactly what they were hoping. They had a predefined story in their mind. They didn't get the entire Yoda Luke uh, training experience that we got when it was Luke and Ray, for example. Right. Uh, and and I do have a few opinions about that. We can get into in a second. Okay. And what are those opinions? Um. Well. Okay. Um. I feel I feel like uh, Ryan Johnson pulled a few Joss Whedon moves. And I say this with all the respect in the world for Joss Whedon, he enjoys misdirecting for misdirection's sake, right? Um, we all know that if you see a gun on the wall in the first act, by the third act, it needs to be fa- fired, right? Um, it, was there anyone, anyone out there who when uh, they saw Luke's X-Wing in the bay under the water, think to their mind, oh my God, we're going to get a C- we're going to get to see her raise it up out of the water with the force as she's as she's learning how to use it. Nope. Don't even go back to it. Oh, Does, see, not even the reason, not even a thing. See, the reason why I thought they showed his X-wing was just to demonstrate how he got there and basically his own intention to stay there because in the shot when you see it there are pieces missing too. So the idea is this thing is submerged and screwed and and, hmm. and there's no or it was also there, like you said, oh, was it a misdirection to raise it out? Yeah, I sort of thought that at one moment, like when I first saw it. And then the other thing I thought, because of what happens later in the film, right. is it gave us a way for something to be possible. And, right. And, you know, not to spoil some shit, but that for Luke to get off the planet is basically the assumption. Right. Which is, yeah, which is, was, you know, essentially what you're expecting to happen. Mm-hmm. Um. And so I don't know. I, I I honestly feel that the film could have benefited from um some 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 cuts, some hard editing. Um, I also understand that as uh you know someone who has written and directed your film, you don't want to kill your, any of your babies, and 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 you're very happy to leave them in there. Um, but there are some parts I think that could have been shortened, and everything would have been just fine. Well, I think that's almost true of any movie although i will say that i think the majority of what happened in the casino scene was almost uh unneeded you know the betting place see i enjoyed that and it was it 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 was okay but when it finally came down to like the and and don't get me wrong i'm not against anything i'm not for animal cruelty but when it became a political message about animal rights although it was very interesting certain elements that you could see certain parallels playing out 
uh, for stuff happening in the news today that would kind of apply there. But I don't think they were trying to force that type of, no, of no, no, left no, no, no. agenda, I, but just pointing I don't out agree like either. war uh, yeah. benefits more than just, there's more evil in the galaxy than just the first order, basically is what they were saying. Yes. In a way. Uh, in but, a way. Anyway, but uh, these are also the top one percenters. Ooh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, not really playing. By the way, uh, he did uh, take our dare. Uh, Mr. Corey, can you hear us? Welcome to the to the sh- program. Hey, one love, everybody. Nagathon 2017. Oh, we, yeah, we, man. We can kind of hear him. You're almost there. Yeah. Just play with some volumes but while you uh, oh, yeah. while you talk to him. Uh, it's okay. nice hearing yes, from you, sir. Yes. Nice to hear you guys. I, I just had a minute and wanted to call in and say thanks for another year of podcasts and looking forward to uh, the next year. Well, I, I think you're stretching it a little, calling it a year of podcasts, but you know, okay, we'll, we'll work with you on that one. A calendar year. <laughs> I don't, I don't I don't even think that qualifies. Hey, Ben Glebe took six months off. So I guess you guys are, uh, are on a pretty good pace compared to that. Well, you know, true, I, true. I don't want to do any comparisons or nothing. But Ben's back, and I'm glad I love last week on Earth. So. Good. Me and, too. And by the way, I'm really sorry too, uh, Mr. Corey, because um, uh, when you tried to call earlier, obviously we couldn't take your call. And uh, and I think also when we were having audio issues, the, the only people that hear it are the podcast people, but uh, when we were having audio issues, um, you didn't get to hear mention that one of the things Trent's been doing lately has been doing some uh, some uh binging of the next generation and and one of those things he came to what was the name of the episode uh true q there you go i've heard of that episode yes because oh you don't say you you wrote basically the the first script that it was adapted from correct correct there yeah. if you want to yeah you... yeah my question i i actually did have a question about this because um do i i and maybe i was just watching passively enough that i didn't see it but i didn't see your name uh credited uh, on the episode is that or was it when did i just miss it it's at the ending credits um it's like the third from the last card that goes by at the bottom of the screen if, if you look okay. at the ending credits you'll see the words modern sound and then the next credit my name pops up oh, okay okay good I'm, I'm i'm glad you got yours well i'm surprised i'm surprised you don't just have a gif you can throw up or a gif or whatever that you can just that throw out there for us to see i'm sure you do right come on you gotta have that I may have it somewhere. I, there so was you? a time I threw up the uh, the credits of I think it was the Tell Them Steve Dave claymation one where all the the donors are listed and the way that they were all listed, my name and Will Wilkins' names are on the same uh, screen at the time. There nice. You go. Sorry you got stuck with such bad company, sir. Hey, hey uh, now. And Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and all that other stuff to you, sir, uh, out there and uh, on the East Coast. I I, I hear that uh, there might be a really uh, nasty cold front coming your way. Is that true? Uh, more up north, I think we'll be okay here in the Carolinas, but, um, it's after one o'clock here on the East coast and my wife's pissed that I'm not in bed. So, and not in a good oh. way. Oh, well, it could be a good way. You just got to flip that script, sir. <laughs> no. Um, uh, question, question for you, Matt. Uh, I know you've got, uh, he just said uh, his wife's pissed. What are you doing, dude? What I did. He did. You're like the reporter yelling at Donald Trump as he's walking away. What? Huh? No. <laughs> oh yeah, no. You you call in. You're getting held hostage. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, we've got you by the short hairs right now, dude. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, what's up? We're taking. Um. Questions. What's 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 the uh, what's the Logan what's the Utah, kids? Go ahead. Yeah. What's <laughs> what's 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 on the Christmas list for the kids this year? What what does everyone want? Uh. Well, they want lots of stuff. Uh, yeah. The, uh, they got a Xbox. One of them got the Xbox for his birthday last summer. So we're going to okay. get him a couple of games and a couple of things to go with the Xbox. Nice. And um, a couple of other fun game stuff. And then we try to get some non-video game things so that they can actually still get out and exercise and do stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Crazy Makes talk. Sense. But, it, but, but okay. Like like myself as a child looking looking for a game or two to uh, pass the, the Christmas break with. Yeah, we were going to get Battlefront 2, but then all of the, the whole microtransaction news hit. And I'm like, eee, maybe Bunch we'll of wait on that. Bullshit, EA pissing me off. Ooh, interesting. Yeah. All right, Matt, look, yeah. I've been, I'm going to intervene, not because I want to get you off the air, but only because I don't want your wife to be more pissed off at you than you are. It's easy for a bachelor that's just drinking in Utah to make judgment calls for you, but uh, I'm going to keep it on Front Street. So thank you for your call, sir. Merry don't Christmas. be like me. Happy holidays, all that jazz, and uh, and we'll catch you on the flip side, all righty? 
One yeah, love. One love. Thank Bye. you. And uh, and that'll take me into my next question. What is this microtransaction thing from Battlefront 2? Oh, this about? is this is some bullshit. Okay, so uh, go ahead and we'll do this, then we'll get back to The Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah. So uh this this new version of Battlefront came out. Everyone really enjoyed it, and it was it was it's a pretty good game. Um I haven't played it. Uh my roommate, who is an avid gamer, in fact, uh hit me up later and I can tell you about his um uh star wars inspired uh age of empires 2 tournament he's got going on um but uh the game didn't really have any play like there there was a definite plateau of like you get to a certain level and then there's like nothing else left right you're like you're you're good you're so good but there's no place to like go after that so in the second uh uh rendition of it that they released uh there were there there is a place to like progress um you could either spend and i don't remember exactly the numbers so i'm just shooting from the hip here i'm sure someone uh on the twitter is gonna jump in and and give the exact ones but you could either spend something like i don't know 200 hours to earn all these different um uh asides that would help the game or you could pay like three hundred dollars in microtransactions to get the same effect of having played for two hundred plus hours. That's uh, either way uh, for a video game that seems like a very high investment, either in time or money. Exactly. Like, and that's and that, I mean, any gaming fan will tell you. Um, uh, regardless, I honestly believe any gaming fan will say, "Look." Uh, <laughs> We're not paying for you to develop and fix a game. We're paying for the game. There was a time where you didn't have that option to just uh, release something and then and then let people keep on paying for more of it. Uh, there was a time uh, not too long ago where it had to be finished and then it was released and people paid. And the interesting thing is we're paying the exact same amount now as we were you know, 20 years ago for video games. The only difference is we were getting a finished product then. And now it's always like, Oh, we're going to fix that in the next DLC, blah, 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 blah. Uh, or, you know, you can upgrade with microtransactions like that. Uh, I just discussed anyway, it's, it's some bullshit and EA has notoriously been the worst at it. So you're also creating a scenario too, where basically people can, can economically force their way within the game uh, and exploit it because they're able to just buy totally. their way up. Absolutely. Yep. Nice. Is it also, does it contain a PVP environment at all too? Multiplayer or anything like that? Yes. Yes. Oh, even better. Great. Yep. Sorry. Now we're talking about nerdy game stuff. Not a lot of people. Well, I'm not a lot of people, but not a lot of people want to talk about. Um, but that's interesting to hear. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's always, uh, it's as a person that used to be what I would definitely call addicted to gaming, uh, mm-hmm. mostly during, uh, EverQuest. I think in some ways, world of Warcraft helped both supplement and curb me off that. Not to mention also, <laughs> uh, parenthood was another sure. uh, contributor yeah, there. Yeah. Having, you know, things like responsibility. Yeah. 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 You know, when it's, when it's not just your spouse, you're neglecting, uh, but more people than that. And you're cutting your earning potential. I don't think people really appreciate that in your, in your, uh, personal life. So, yeah. uh, anyway, uh, it, it, but it, I, I know that there were a lot of those similar types of scenarios where it's like, okay, well not everyone can spend the countless hours of wasting their life on this. Uh, so yep. let's, let's come up with another way that we can let them do that. Uh, also, I think a lot of it stemmed from at the, at least at that time, and I'm sure it does as well from now is it's just a, a, it has to be a combative strategy as well against some of the quote unquote farming houses, at least that used yes. to exist at the time to right. where somebody else is making money off their game and they get pissed off about that. Cause it's yeah. like, Oh, you know, I'm yep. going to spend a hundred some odd dollars. And I'm going to get me some levels and some quality gear. You know, yeah, I can, well, yeah, which w- was made famous in in you know the 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 early renditions of MMORPGs. Yeah, baby. Oh my gosh. I mean, there were there were businesses, and there were there were there were like farming places in in farming labs in, in yeah. foreign nations and everything. Yep. I mean, that's just that's nuts. But then again, I, I guess any way somebody can find a way to exploit a system to literally make hay as the sun shines. It, you're going to get that type of scenario. Like even now, uh, there was a re- there was a parable. I was, oh, the, the whole Bitcoin thing and the investing in Bitcoin. You know, it's like yeah. uh, this massive craze. I don't know a damn thing about it, so I don't care about it. But it sure seems to be causing some kind of a frenzy. I think there was even a company that went from making 
ice tea to now they're working in in crypto technology or, yeah, or crypto back or something. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Nuts, well, man. and it's it's it, it is it's so interesting. I had this uh, conversation just yesterday um, with a friend, and um, especially with Bitcoin too, because it's all about. I mean, yes, money, especially anything outside of a gold standard is fake, right? It, it only has as much value as, as, as a culture is willing to accept that it has. Uh, but even more so with, um, with, uh, crypto currencies, because it can't be perch. It can't be, it's like, it's not, uh, available for, for trading of goods and services everywhere. So for example, like to my father, uh, he could have a million bitcoins and it, it would equal zero dollars to him. Because he has no way to, you know what I mean, to like comprehend what it is or even to uh, make make that asset liquid or anything along those lines. Um, so it, it, it's kind of a, a a way that's separating classes even at this point too, um, which I think was was not the intention originally. No, definitely not. I mean, I think it was a – well, come on. Let's face it. I think the realistic thing is that a, a lot of the <laughs> yeah. cryptocurrency was come up with in order to – find ways to hold transactions without yeah. being tracked doing shit. Uh, Guns and drugs. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> drugs and bugs, drugs and bucks. It's what, it keeps the world going round. By the way, I just actually quoted Joe Pesci from a from the Michael Jackson Moonwalker uh, movie uh, short whoa. videos thing. So, whoa, what the hell just You're gonna happened You're going to have to look there? that up. I don't, Joe, wow. Joe Pesci, yeah, bugs and drugs, bugs and drugs. I don't, Okay. why, you know, I don't. I have one brother whose birthday I know because he was born on Christmas Day. Other than that, I can't remember that. But bugs and drugs, <laughs> that's right in it's the frontal there, lobe, guys. It's there. Congratulations, Will. Way to go on that one. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, the whole cryptocurrency thing. That I mean, that's definitely going above my head. But also, I, I would just be terrified to invest in something that is even more incredibly intangible than, quote unquote, shares in a company. You know, yes. I mean, this is, this is like yep. literally... This is a, a thing where you've got a currency that is that is is literally backed by no assets whatsoever. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, but then again, like you said, when it comes to like computer pre- professionals and even it could get to the point of major corporations, totally. If a cryptocurrency were to become the main currency, you would essentially outcast outclass those that have no way to access or exactly. redeem it. So nobody Yeah. Uh, I guess essentially it would come down to people would either have to or not have a smartphone and that's yeah or or some other type of device. Well and and, and then the know-how how to access, you know, certain sides of of the internet that the, you know, the the most average user is never gone. So it's and yeah, it's I got to tell you I I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think any of us know. Um I do know I want to get back to uh the Star Wars and I would like to hear your rankings of the Star Wars uh, movies. And I'm going to start with mine. Okay, so here, here's here's how I view um, the movies, all right? We've got uh, Empire, number one, okay, for best movie. After that, uh, this might be controversial, but I'm going to say it, Rogue One. Rogue One. Fucking love that show, movie. Um, after that, New Hope. Return of the Jedi, Force Awakens, Last Jedi, and then three, two, one. Jesus, you literally wrote this down. You've you've put some serious yeah. thought into this. Yeah, yeah. Well, because uh, so many people have asked me within the past two weeks what my ranking is. I've had to think about it. So yeah, Empire, Rogue One, New Hope, Return, Force Awakens, Last Jedi, three, two, one. I really think that that um, that that if I answer this, I may risk ostracization. No, um, no, man. You, hey, you know what? You like what you like, and there's no need to to be apologetic about it. Okay, because in that case, it's uh, it's uh, Empire, Rogue One. Nope, 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 nope. Hold on. Okay. Empire, okay. Last Jedi, Rogue One, Force Awakens, then Return of the Jedi. Okay. Then the original. Yeah. Then three, two, one. Because. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. Let them blow because, up. <laughs> That's why. Because said, three, let them two, blow one. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting because Ryan Johnson had said that uh, he took most of his inspiration from Return for this film. From Return of the Jedi. 
Yeah. Real, well, you know, Return of the Jedi has the exact same plot element of, of Empire Strikes Back that, that we, we sort of really didn't have so much in Star Wars because there it was just basically princess trapped, everyone getting princess. So you right. don't have a lot of the party splitting up, but and Empire right. is like literally we're we're breaking up the band. Some going here. Yeah, there's a scene. There. There's a scene where we see the ships, you know, d- diverge. Yeah, and later, later, y'all, we got to yeah. go. Sorry, one love. Pretty much. Uh, so so and and you get elements of that also within Return of the Jedi because it's like everyone comes back together and then Luke is like, ah, I'm screwing this up. I gotta go, and then I gotta go face Vader myself and. Yada, yada, yada. So it's a lot of coming together, going apart, coming together, going apart. Uh, right. and, and this movie did a lot of that too, but, but Return of the Jedi really less. And I really got, I don't want to say I got an empire vibe off of this at all because I didn't. Um, and I, and I have to say, that no, neither did I, neither did I. My general impression of the movie, like I said, is it gave me everything I, I wanted because a long time ago, uh, not even in a galaxy far, far away, I realized I don't write Star Wars stories. I don't make Star Wars stories, so I can either like Star Wars stories that someone else does, or I can't. The prequels, I wasn't exactly thrilled about, um, but uh, when it came to The Force Awakens, they did enough of some new stuff to pique my interest, uh, and actually, I enjoyed, uh, more to the point, The Last Jedi actually changed my opinion of The Force Awakens. I now view it uh, for its inferiorities compared to The Last Jedi. Right. Well, and and a a uh, a colleague with whom I work is a big a, a fan of the prequels and Star Wars in general. Um and and he was talking about how um he was so happy that 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 JJ Abrams started this new trilogy and he was happy that Ryan did the the second one, but he's he's it and and not as a knock to uh, the Last Jedi, but it makes you it makes you happy that JJ gets to come in now and end this part of this new trilogy, right? Um, he he gets to come in. The interesting thing that we speculated on though was, were there any parts like I would love to be a fly on the wall where JJ is is watching it for the first time by himself, uh, watching. Um, last jedi see something happening says ah fuck <laughs> like <laughs> like that is not i was gonna use that character you look, know what look, i mean guys let, let's just put it all on front street we're not the first ones to introduce this concept there is a lot of ryan johnson's the last jedi that just seems to say because even the core message of the movie is essentially let the past die and and there is a lot in the last jedi that just says oh that stuff from the force awakens we're just gonna let that die because liter- I mean, folks, I, there is there is nothing like the hero having to admit something they they now say they realize, which is, um, as a small child, I was traded for gas and a pack of smokes, and left here, which is Ray, right? So, Maybe so 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 because if you think about Maybe. it, the Force Awakens set. Oh, don't see now you're just doing it. Look, dude, we were told that was it. Just let it go. Oh yeah. He even yeah. says he even says you know it's true. And in the first movie, a similar thing was said. Maz in the first movie told her, you know, they're not coming back. Yeah, but we also in in episode four we were also told that uh, Darth Vader killed Luke's father. Yeah, well, Obi Wan Kenobi was a dick, dude. I mean, you know, think about it. He did a lot of lying to a lot of people. All I'm saying is, I think because that line uh, is delivered ambiguously, giving Abrams the the opportunity to to, and, and I hope he does not, but gives him the opportunity to go in and say, well, actually, that was just a ruse by uh, by Ben Solo to go in there and and uh, and. And try to win her over. There's what enough, I lo- there is a, there's a, there is enough of a plot uh, loop. Totally l- wiggle room in there. Yeah, totally. But what I love the most about what Ryan Johnson uh, did um, was that he showed that the force um, is not dogmatic, right? And that when you try to pigeonhole, and and I and I think the um, the character played by Benicio del Toro only uh, just reiter- reiterates this is that when you try to put uh, titles on what's good and what's bad and uh, when when you try to dogmatize it through through certain forms or whatever, um, that's where I mean essentially the 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 dogma of the of the Jedi created Darth Vader, 
right? The rules of the Jedi were what created Darth Vader. If he would have been allowed to like be with Padme or allowed to just kind of, you know, have the force, but like put his own spin on it, he may have never, you know, turned out or gone to the dark side. But it was it was the binary you have to do this and you can't do that that turned him into such an evil person. And so that's what I really liked about the whole concept of the film was that like we're we're saying goodbye to this like this old notion of like uh of of defining what is good and bad. It's it's in my opinion and and maybe this is just because I'm so uh it's very close to home in uh, re- uh religious um homogenization but uh it it's it's like trying to define or it's it's like um uh, it's like saying that uh in mormonism for example you have a list of things you can't or you can't do right and based on those things determine whether or not you're a, a good mormon or not as opposed to just being a good person and helping out people less fortunate than you what really matters is what you're not doing right making sure that you're not doing this that and the other and I think it's that dogmatic um, minutia that that uh, he's giving the finger to, which really makes uh, the force way more uh, um, for everyone involved, as opposed to just you know those with the highest metachlorian counts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Instead of space wizards with special germs. Yeah. Okay. I you use a lot of big words, man. You remember this is supposed to be Nagathon. It's late on a Saturday night. People are drinking. Bocephus juices are flowing, man. I can't help it. Clearly, you're off the chain, my friend. Uh, although, it is interesting just the amount of, of this movie that does give a finger to almost everything that it seemed like J.J. set up. Because you got Phasma. You got uh, Ray's parents aren't important. Snoke, ah, you know what? His backstory, not so important. He's just a bad guy. It's another emperor out of hell with it. Well, and and that's what's so interesting about the the whether or not Ray's parents are so important. Or not. I honestly hope they're not because I am so sick of this like, oh, it's this lineage that's important. No, it's not. The force is for everyone. Um, and this is where I, I think you can blend that in with a good cut. Man, they spent 15 minutes of of her in the the upside down of the island that amounted to to not moving the plot forward at all. What did that? Well, I think it what it was attempting <laughs> to do. <coughs> at least with well, Empire, uh, actually, at least with Empire, Luke like saw his own face within Vader's mask, right? But here, she just sees herself the whole time. See, I now, and, and I don't mean to, boy, I, if I thought you went off on a tangent right now, buckle in, folks, because this is about to get, you just, you better get the, n- the nog the fuck on, okay? Let's because do it. Let's do it. Here we go. The interesting thing I just realized when you're kind of making this explanation is that, uh, well, first of all, it is kind of important to ser- sort of establish that if you are going to keep having these space wizards, you yeah, have yeah, to yeah. kind of remem- remind the audience that it's not just this one lineage that gets to to do all this cool stuff. Right. It could be anybody. And that's kind of why the little kid at the end with bringing a broom to himself, totally. it's kind of like, this is the future. Uh and this trilogy, honestly speaking, it's doing two things. It's kind of uh, rebooting the franchise for everybody, but it's also got to do some things to kind of set up the next franchise too, or the next uh, trilogy. <coughs> so a lot of these characters are just kind of like bridge characters, unless in the long right. run, it's also like, oh my gosh, you guys aren't going to believe this. I just got cast in a Star Wars movie. That means I got my youth and my fucking retirement booked. <laughs> just just settled right i mean because seriously that's it now but that's none of that's not what i was uh, going with the other thing i was going with is i there were two things i took out of that scene because it was very hard to get something out of but i thought it was interesting that they it because with kylo ren we're seeing a lot of a weird character where it's like well he wants to be bad but he's getting supposedly feeling the drawings of being good but instead he kind of becomes this hybrid of it where he does what's kind of the right thing because it suits right. him. <coughs> and then he proves he's the bad guy. Whereas the other weird thing about that scene is that technically it, it, they made it look like Ray does this like in-depth confrontation uh, with the dark side. And instead of even being changed by it, she just looked at it and, and was then um, like made a realization of it, which was just, 
that way is cold and lonely. That's all she got out of it. And, and, uh, so she's kind of an opposite hybrid where she's mostly good and, and recognizes the dark side, but just doesn't have any kind of feeling about it. So I don't know. They, well, and that's kind of like the whole renew thing as well that they're kind of say, it's like that old religions crap. Let's we're moving right. forward with the future. Um, Which I, I mean, dude, how much I, I personally, and I've heard, I've heard others that did not like it, but I fucking loved, loved Yoda's part in the film. I thought it was, it was, it moved the plot. It was funny. And it was very Yoda. It was, except for the fact that they had to do that point of him doing the little leg dance, just so we all knew, yes, this is a puppet. Yeah, which, but, but that said, they finally, in all the reiterations of Yoda we've seen, they finally got his ears to work in the right way, um, which, which to me was was absolutely perfect, the way they would, like, curl in at certain times, almost like a facial feature itself. I was happy it was a puppet. Yeah, well, I think everybody was, because that was uh, part of the, you know, uh, kind of the inverse, uh, as you've explained to me, uh, the inverse of the uncanny valley. He's so... right artificial yep. that we just instantly accept it. The thing that I liked hearing about was the fact that this puppet was in fact cast from the original mold <gasps> from Yoda. Was it really? Yeah. Oh my God. That's so cool. So that's why there are probably many similarities to what you would expect to see from totally. Yoda's ears because they were doing exactly what they should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, that was also an interesting scene. Um, the other weird thing I, I, or not weird thing. The other thing I noted in this movie that I, I found very interesting was the way that it continuously, planted seeds to help get us to where we needed to be for the end of the movie. There are all these little right. elements that happen in the film in regards to the force and people doing things through the force, like wherever Snoke is from, he's throwing people around with the force across the galaxy. So, well, that's an interesting concept. And then Ray and, uh, Ben Kenobi or Kylo Ben, as I like to call him is, yeah, uh, Ben solo. No, he's Kylo Ben. He's kind of like both. <laughs> Okay. Uh, you know, they end up getting somehow mentally linked and can see one. So there's a lot of these kind of little things it, there. It, it was very much in the same way of guardians of the galaxy for me. It's almost like they introduced certain concepts specifically because it helps move thing. It, it's something that comes back later. Like even right. Like Luke says, what do you expect me to do? Come with you and face down the entire empire or the entire first order with a laser sword. Right. Yeah. It's like, uh, okay. And then later on something happens and you're like, ha ha. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, th and those parts are a little bit service, I think. Um, no, they, they are. And, and to quickly interject, I feel like the film in one part for me, at least it suffered a little bit. And at least for the other people, uh, in the, the screening that I saw, uh, the, the comedic timing is very off in parts. Right. So the idea of and, and I think Marvel does a really good job of um, you've got to build up a lot of tension and then you release it with a joke after you've earned kind of like sitting through that. Like, I can't take any more. Then comes a joke. Um, the almost the first line of dialogue we see is a joke and no one in the audience laughed with the 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 Poe cell phone bit. Oh, really? They were just, they were laughing hysterically in my theater. No, because it's like, it's, <clears throat> there's this huge fucking star destroyer right here. And then he's just here. Like they're expecting like some massive shit to go down. And then a, a joke's being played out. I mean, personally myself, I like to earn it. Like I, I, I want to have to like be ready for it. I think the, the first joke should have been, in my opinion, uh, Luke throwing the the lightsaber over his shoulder. That would be at the end of like a oh my god when when Rose's sister makes the sacrifice to drop the bombs on the dreadnought. That's so like there's so much tension at that point. Relieve it with a joke, then it might move things a little bit faster. I don't know. That's my two bits. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, cause look, I, I really enjoyed this movie and I've so seen did it. I, I I've, fucking seen loved it, it. I've seen it a few times, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not one to admit there aren't issues. Like, uh, the one big problem I have is that like the majority of this movie is, you know, this, this, uh, fleet of rebels that ah. are flying away from this star destroyer, right? They're able right. to keep just enough distance out to where, any damage they do can't really get through the shields. <clears throat> but my problem with this is this is a very uh, 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 Terran 
concept. This is a very yes. gravitational. It's a very X Y. Uh, yes, it's very two dimensional. Yes, very. That's it, two dimensional. Whereas these are things traveling in space. There is no other place on anywhere on the Z vector that the Empire doesn't have somebody that they can't just come in. You know what I mean? It's yep. That was my yep. and and honestly, that was like one of my only big problems that, at all with the movie. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, and and only to further um, skew that thought, like, so if, if if we're looking at like, um, you know, just traveling through a plane of existence, right, a, a plane of space, why couldn't one of the ships who obviously had enough fuel, but it was the it was the impulse speed to use uh, TNG or or Star Trek. Um, terminologies that they couldn't keep up with him, right? The, the hyperspeed wouldn't have been a problem. So why not just make one jump of hyperspace out here to point A and then jump to point B, which happens to be in front of the uh, the the rebel ships, and then they would be trapped right there. Like, that's kind of a no-brainer to me, at least. I don't know. Yeah, there's something about the physics we don't know. But it was nice to finally see what would happen in a Star Wars movie if somebody didn't actually carefully plot their course in jumping to light speed. Can we talk about Laura Dern's final moments? Holy shit, dude. She jumps into the dreadnought and they choose to just go silent on the sound reel. Jesus, that was impactful. That was very, very, very oh powerful. Oh my god! Yeah, that was uh, that was, and it was just cool to see that. Be, you know, because we see it from the other perspective. You just see like what looks like all of the stars stretching out, and instead, this was kind of like the opposite of that. Where exactly it was, uh, it this is you know this was this thing traveling through here, but you know the matter wasn't something or other, or I don't know what. Well, and and, and you know. <laughs> At least for myself, I base uh, my uh, conceptual um, interpretation of FTL, faster than light travel, uh, through Battlestar Galactica. Right, like you have to have plan, uh, like planned a, a, a trajectory and a course so that you don't just slam into a planet, you know, along the way. Um, and which maybe, isn't and, really, and maybe that's the bit of physics that we don't think about, and that's the reason why they exactly. can't do certain things. And maybe so. Yeah, we don't know. The other thing that that I, I, again, like it's we're we're fans. It's fun to nitpick. Like right? that's okay. I don't understand why they thought launching ships from the um, or uh, escape pods from the uh, port side. Like, why wouldn't they be seen by <laughs> the the em empire as they just you know, or excuse me, by the first order as they just eventually started just blowing them out of the sky. Oh, well, no, no, no. That, that what they did say, they did mention that part. They said that the idea, the reason why they could get away is because the, the empire would be tuned for scanning for the larger devices and they would be sort of got like ignoring those, those smaller signals. And they may have changed something too, but then because Benicio Toro tells them, they're like, Oh, well, wait, adjust the scanners. And sure enough, Hey, look, there's a bunch of little ships going away. Okay, okay, that makes more sense then. Yeah, yeah. Um, that said, I really, A, I love the choices in any film that uh, Benicio Del Toro makes of, of just like making that character very unique and very his own. Fingers crossed, I really hope J.J. brings him back um, because I, I feel like he, of, of all the characters, showed how um, arbitrary light and dark is in in this universe right oh very um, like right down with that demonstration because it's like yeah this guy the ship was owned by an arms totally dealer. he made his money selling to the bad guys oh and the good guys yep ex exactly like for me i was just like ah oh, yes ex uh, not unlike how uh we have documentation of isis using uh episode four as a uh, recruitment tool for themselves saying, look, look, we're, we're the rebels. We're this small group of people fighting against the empire, right? Like it's all a matter of perspective of what's good and bad with light and dark. So I, I truly appreciated that. And which I think the best thing for me, at least in, in my fandom uh, for this film is that it, it tears down the, the dogmatic, um, interpretation of what's good and bad what's light and dark no it's, um, all, it's all just a machine man the only way exactly to, the only exactly. way to stay just, safe don't join it's oh my god wasn't that great 
oh, so good. Yeah, and he, and he was also just very, I mean, the, the thing that I liked about his character is that he, he truly is what I think conceptually Han Solo was in the beginning. He Boom. was just Nailed a it. pure rogue. It doesn't yep. matter. I am I'm in this to survive. Hey, you know, and that's exactly kind of his point. Is like we got caught. I made a deal. Uh, yeah, and I'm yep. I'm walking away. Oh look, I got a bunch of boxes with money too. Yep. Bye bye. You know exactly. Maybe we'll see well, each other and, again. And, Maybe we won't. I don't know. And that brings me back to the point of the democratization of the force, right? Like uh, the one of the first times we see Ben Kenobi and Han have a conversation, Ben says, "Oh well." You could look you you also could learn how to use the force if you wanted to like anyone can. It's not this lineage of of it has to be through the, you know, through the the Anakin Skywalker lineage to be uh, inherently good. Like yeah. anyone can use the force. And that's that's why I just fingers crossed. I really hope that that Ray's parents sold her for a pack of smokes. Yeah, <laughs> dude, beer and, I, a, I really hope it was beer and gas money because yeah. it's. That's a more inspirational story than like, oh, well, she actually is the is the daughter of so and so. And that's why, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it it's it, some look, some people are just heroes because that's the role they were born to play. And it's not necessarily who their parents were or anything else. And, and I think that was the other, uh, I think, important thing to sort of reestablish, like you said, like. Ben Kenobi back in the day said, you know, it's just like, reach out, come on, feel it. And it's just like, oh, this guy is strong with it. So he's got a good connection, but it wasn't about germs or anything else. It was just a matter of it's this thing that's out there. So it really is like a religion. It's something anyone could adopt. Uh, so I, it doesn't yeah. have to be a Skywalker. Um, I don't know if you got a chance. Uh, it was floating around all over the internet through Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, etc. cetera. Um, on uh, the Collider website, um, Adam Chitwood wrote an article um, about the 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 problem. Well, he even titles it, you know, "Star Wars: The Last Jedi" and the problem with fan theories, right? And he and, and he sets it up like, "Look, we're fans, and it's fun to theorize and to and to poke holes and to, um, I mean, it, to me at least, and I don't know if I'm looking too much into this." But it was in those opening scenes where we see BB-8 trying to put his fingers in all the holes in the dike, right? As mm -hmm. it's, as, and then he eventually just has to match mash his whole body into it. If that wasn't a allusion uh, with an A to like what the whole like Star Wars mythos is about, um, it's it's fun to do those things. But at the end of the day. Uh, I, I'm just going to read it because, you know, as The Last Jedi proves, it's not always going to be what you expect. And assuming the filmmakers will or, slash have to follow up on questions you have in the manner you expect is unfair to the film and ultimately yourself. I'm going to tweet this out. Um, I, that doesn't even come close to doing justice what uh, uh, he does in this article. But it, it is a, a great way of just saying, you know, like what you like and let it go. We are in such an amazing – dude, not only are we getting um, more Star Wars, we're getting more Star Wars on the regular. On the reg. 20, 20 years ago, who would have thought that was even a possibility? And for those who are pissed about it, you know what? Go join your friends who are mad about girl Ghostbusters and fuck off. You know, dude, I retweeted, I can't remember the name of the guy. It's somebody that's verified, but he just had the funniest take. He's like, oh, you want to whine about essentially like the elements of The Last Jedi? Let me tell you what I went through, okay? I went through in the theater, Jar Jar Binks, <laughs> such and such, uh, and a freaking space diner. That's right. I said it, a freaking space diner. Yes. <laughs> And it's the, so, so the true. The prequels were a lot. I mean, seriously, the Star Wars fandom really kind of has been stretched uh, really thin because really it was a lot, I think, for the older generation to kind of really take anything away from the prequels. But much like you said, it was because of the, the fact that uh, those movies weren't made for us. They were made to sell exactly. toys and exactly <clears throat> and, and keep kids engaged and help uh, bring the bring story it along. Bring a generation. Totally. Exactly. So, you know, uh, and they, they weren't for me and I, I didn't get a lot out of them, but I, it was interesting that so many elements from those kind of got like lifted out. Like even 
Luke saying, you know, the Hoover, the, not necessarily the hubris of the Jedi, but you know, it, maybe they shouldn't be around because at the height of their power, they, they brought in the, the M emp- the emperor uh, came into existence yep. on their watch. So, yep. uh, and, and I also did kind of like when he was talking to Ray and he gets her like completely into feeling the force. And then he just like drops a little science on her. Suddenly it's like, yeah. And that doesn't, uh, unlike what the Jedi, I think that doesn't belong to anyone. It doesn't belong to anyone. <clears throat> exactly. And that doesn't belong to them. For me, like just the democratization of the force is the most important thing out there. And I'm so glad that we can finally articulate that Ray is the last Jedi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's kind of clear because. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they, of, they, they, they kind of hit you over the head because not it. everybody really. Yeah, but he says, "I'm not the last Jedi." You see, right. Ray levitating rocks, and right. uh, and and again, careful use of uh, of Yoda's words, and and maybe this is a little something to kind of make sure we're not taking it face value because Yoda says something along the lines of, uh, "There's nothing in those texts that Ray doesn't already possess." Mm, and, and these turners, they are not. Yeah, but he but he does say there isn't anything in them that she doesn't possess. And then later on, we discover she actually boosted the books because they're in the same drawer on the Falcon that Ray takes right. the blanket out yes. of to give oh, her I'm Rose. Glad you, yes, uh huh. I thought, and the first time I saw it, I'm like, wait, was was that? And oh yeah, it was. So yep, <clears throat> that was a very interesting bit to throw in. Uh, definitely, definitely a lot of great things uh, in the movie. I'm amazed that it's uh, so controversial because it seems like everyone in my circle of friends, Oh, we're talking about bubbles again. Uh, it seems like everybody I know <laughs> kind of liked it. The only one that I think, I don't think got the same experience out of it was like I, the guy who runs the scum and villainy cantina, JC, uh, Reifenberg. He's also the producer on fat yeah. man on Batman. Yes. Um, uh, he, he, yeah, go ahead, man. Uh, he definitely, um, I think didn't like it just from things that I've seen, uh, on the, uh, uh from him, but I I don't know that I've seen anyone else really speak to it that I know of in the negative. And I, I don't know if you guys on 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 uh, Twitter, maybe you have a different opinion at hashtag netheads. I mean, Ash Williams is saying that uh, basically this movie rips off Dark Empire, which I should go out and, and, and pull my comics out of the garage and perhaps look at to see. Uh, but I'm not necessarily uh, tracking it. Oh, the fail whale popped up too while we were on. Sorry. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. Now the uh the other thing too that I wanted to talk about uh, it wasn't necessarily tied directly to the last Jedi actually it has absolutely nothing to do with it uh, I was having a conversation uh, actually completely uh, outside of, of anything you may think related and and it was a question that wasn't expecting but it was definitely a question that I was surprised at my answer to and I don't know if you guys would 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 share the same opinion out there as fans of NetHeads, and I apologize, I can't believe we've gone so long, we'll be wrapping it up soon, I swear, if you've stuck with us this long, I highly commend you, you're an amazing person, and you've got well, the and fortitude you, to really, and uh, they obviously I haven't drank as much done. as I have, however, I, I would definitely also say that uh, we are, we will be wrapping up soon, because uh, like uh, Trent's bladder almost exploded, uh, so I was having this conversation, Trent, recently, um, and, and somebody asked me a question, and I was surprised at my answer, uh, mostly because it was the first th- time I had thought about it, um, and I'm interested to first hear your answer. We were talking okay. about, um, I can't really be sure what we were specifically talking about. I, I think it was, uh, I, it, it came up that I like cut my teeth on installing Windows 95 and Windows NT, I think, 351. Okay. And the yeah. like, you know, back when there were like drivers panes and, and, and you actually right. had to edit config files and before, and, yeah, before you could, yeah, update. Yeah. And all other kinds of things that I can mention that, that millennials don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, huh? It just doesn't do it on its own. No. It's, what do you mean your phone? <laughs> what do you mean you can't surf the web on your, can you imagine if you threw them back, like literally? Anyway. Um, even just 15 years ago, man. Yeah. It's, things change very fast. But that was the nature of the thing, uh, the, the, right. the inquiry. Cause somebody said, they asked me, what do you think was the pivotal thing that changed the way people interact with computers? That was the question that was asked. Okay. I'm not going to give you my answer. First, I want to hear yours. At which point, then I'll probably let you say a few words, rudely interrupt, and tell you what my yeah. answer was. Uh, the mouse. Okay, I get that. It's a direct th- interaction with I- computer. Yeah, I think that is probably, the, in my opinion, the most influential uh, uh 
aspect of UI user interface with uh, technology being like a mouse, a stylus, or anything along those lines. I'm not saying you're waking up in the yard yet, but uh, I would definitely love to hear you try and say user interface again. Just one more time. I know. I heard myself slur that, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Is it a user, 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 user interface? God damn it. I've Dude, been holding this, my shit together so well. If only if only some <laughs> woman randomly knocks on the front door, it'll be so oh! much like the first Nagathon now. Call back to what, 2000. 11, 10? 2011, Nine? 2011. Was it 2011? 2011. Radio Skew okay. 2005. Uh, NetHeads on uh, Smodco Internet Radio yeah. is like August of 2011. Yeah, and and our first Nogathon was on not hit on not heads NetHeads not. <laughs> <laughs> fuck me yeah God you, damn it. <laughs> dude you are you're definitely one with i the feel clan. like i'm understanding a lot of stuff though it's like i feel like i was way more drunk last year than this year that's that bocephus uses phone sorry i'm gonna make him spit now sorry um spit takes anyway uh what do I, so here's my answer and i don't know if it may surprise you or not um but believe it or not it's not directly attributed to the computer I would say that the one thing that has changed the way fundamentally we interact with computers is actually the advent of broadband technology. Okay. Okay. And the, sure. And my justification, I'll give you my reasoning and then you can okay, tell me if please. you think I've, I've at least got enough to start my, my masters, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. It has the availability of broadband has redefined everything that we are able to do in the world. The internet was part of that. But at the time when the internet first came along, information could be exchanged, but anything big was lengthy and it was it was it was very inconvenient. It was difficult right. to work with. There were modems, Great. it was a mess. Yeah. The advent and availability of broadband technology to everyone created a revolution that uh tried to start a new economy that failed you remember the new economy the dot com right. era dot com right yeah yeah came but and went that, but that from that broadband though the, not somewhat yes somewhat however the way we fundamentally interact with computers now we're getting there here it comes okay then you start to get things like and and mind you this is a guy who who used to do a, a streaming video show from yep. his garage in 1998 when nobody had broadband practically. Yeah. We were running a 56K screen, uh, stream and a 128K stream. I should make you feel Whoa, a little better you now. You guys did 128? Yeah. Well, I had I was one of the first people that I knew of that had DSL. And it was oh, because sure. somebody else Ugh. was paying the bill. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, like, it, uh, in the early Napster days, man, if you could find someone who had a DSL or like a, a, any of the T lines, like that's who you wanted to to pull from, because otherwise you it wasn't happening. Okay, so as as a person that did this and and was obviously involved in something that was way ahead of its time, um, the advent of broadband changed the way we are able to also share information. It is what bore. It's what allowed YouTube to be born because large quantities of information could be exchanged, which ends up leading to a greater revolution in the streaming industry, which leads to streaming television. It leads to us watching TV through our broadband devices. It forces the cell phone industry to up its standards when it comes to data. It pushes the limits, which Very helps true. brings Very us true. to smartphones. So I really firmly believe that one of the things that, that really changed fundamentally the way we deal with computers was the advent and availability of broadband. That really redefined everything. I agree. The one, the the only caveat I give to that is that <clears throat> I'm still faced with, uh, it, very timely, whenever uh, the holidays come around and I have to go back to bumfuck Wyoming, and broadband speed is not available both, uh, both via uh, mobile and via just uh, hardline internet. It's like stepping back in time. Um, something that's that's so everyday normal for me um, of, you know, at, at the very least 200 uh, megabytes per second 
to see, you know, my family or at least my parents who are, are throttled down to or throttled or just out through infrastructure alone down to eight megabytes a second. And they think that's screaming fast. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very interesting to see how other places have been a, been able to adapt without having that speed. Let me tell you, Trent. Now hold on. Let me let me pull this. Let me show you this picture. Now it's just it'll take here. Let me start to download. It'll we'll, we'll talk about something else for a minute, and I'm gonna show you it to you. Okay, <laughs> kind of thing Please. like that still, or uh, you know. Oh, absolutely, man. It's it's it to me. It, it it's crazy how um, people are still able to navigate. Um, the internet in places that are not broadband capable. Um, and I know those are very far and few, um, right now, but it exists even in the United States. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take that away. I mean, there are people that are still on more than likely on some type of dial up to save money. They only know of the internet through which by the way, and somebody brought this up and it's true and it's amazing. You know, before you want to shit on like the good old fashioned American library, remember it's one of the few places that doesn't expect you to buy anything while you're there that you go to. Uh, and I thought about that and it's like, wow, but it's also like, if you don't own a computer, it's a way to have email because you could sign up for a free email service. You could go to a computer at your local library and you could access your email. I mean, you're not going to get your porn there. You know, you're going to have to. No, you are. You still are. It's, well, it's a little off. Yeah. Just don't do it when Miss Nancy's when, reading to the kids. Yeah. That's just... All I'm going to say is when I was a uh, a uh, certified clergyman for the uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and we had our one day a week to access internet, it was us, usually with a bunch of um, gentlemen who had no homes. And while we were uh, corresponding with our families via email in 2003, they were just looking at porn. <laughs> in the Harrison and Kearney libraries of New Jersey. Well, there you go, my friend. <laughs> it was that, or they were, you know, bathing in the, the bathrooms there. Well, you know, it, it, <laughs> cleanliness is thanks to godliness. I guess. Uh, right. You are will right. You are, <laughs> you know, it like, What's really sad about me as a person, Trent, I think is the fact that I'm the part I'm pondering the most. And yeah. I realize now that these guys are, are just obviously, uh, for lack of a better term, downloading for use later, but, but for yeah, a moment, yeah, they're, I, they're, they're going up to the, to the kiosk to print it off, you know, which at the time wasn't even a kiosk. You had to actually get it from someone. Yes. Excuse me. Can I have my printout, please? <laughs> um, that's my minister. <laughs> praise Jesus. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I just, because I was like, why would you sit in a library looking at porn? I mean, because like, essentially that's like saying, why would you go to McDonald's to look at a Big Mac? You know, you're not going to do that. Yeah. You're going to go there to eat a Big Mac. Oh, well, yeah. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, thank you for helping to educate me on that, Trent. It's just not a direction I expected the holiday season to go, <laughs> but I greatly appreciate that. There. It always goes there. So I guess that does answer the one question. We uh, we're in a very interesting time. We're going to be hosting Christmas at our home this year. So uh, oh, good for you, man. Oh, I'm I'm glad you think so. Um, what? Uh, how how many of the external family are you hosting? Well, there's four people in my family, and I know the final yes. number. So I'm saying there's going to probably be 26 to 30 more people here. Jesus, he is the reason for the season. Christ, that is a ton. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know if it actually qualifies it as a ton or it exceeds it, but, um, <laughs> metric <clears throat> in the metric system, perhaps. Yes. I think it falls somewhere within that metric system of a fuck ton. Um, <laughs> but you know, I, and like, I don't know, I don't know what it was like when you were growing up, Trent. Uh, yeah. but you know, I know when I was growing up, it was like this in our household and, uh, same with my wife. So naturally these habits are also, uh, passed on. So as you know, when people come to visit your home, it can't look like anyone actually lives there. You can't have that. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You know, it's like, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, you know, we're not going to uh, we're not going to be be doing any. You know, we, you, no, 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 the cushions, uh, the pillows must be arranged. The cushions must be tidy. The beds must be yep. made. Yep. Uh, my typical pile of laundry next to the bed is not allowed. I mean, yep. what the hell about that? Right? Come on. Yep. Uh, there, there, there were even times in my childhood where I remember everything being thrown into a black uh, trash bag, 
only to be reopened that was hid in the garage afterwards. Yeah, exactly. To, to, to see what like was in there so that we could get our, the shit that we actually needed out. <laughs> well, but you know, it's like, well, I told those kids a hundred damn times to pick up their room and they didn't do it. I'm just throwing all this shit into a garbage bag and oh we'll deal with it God. afterwards. Yep. And we had to earn it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's genius. That's a technique I ought to use. You got to earn it back well, the, now. The, the other technique was, uh, you know, when we had uh, chores like taking out the trash, if you didn't do it, it ended up in your bed. The trash? Yes. Oh, not not in your old stuff. Well, that's 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 really gross. Yeah, no, no. The actual like, you know, bananas and soda cans and whatever else ended up in your bed. You know, Trent, I got to tell you, based on the things you've said, I've had nothing but what I would definitely call at this point now a fancy lad life. <laughs> hey, it only took a couple, a couple, maybe four times before I started taking the trash out. <laughs> it's understandable. But, you know, it's a different time for parents' discipline now. Now it's a greater it threat to say, I'm going to turn off the Internet. Totally, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway. So, uh, so uh, wow. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing that all, Trent. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> there, there's a lot more way down down deep in there that you can only access with the Bocephus juices. <laughs> or a couple more drinks and cry into yourself in a cold shower. Oh, there's going to be a lot of crying tonight. I'm just going to put on some of the saddest Phil Collins music I know. I'm just going to turn on the cold water and just cry yep. naked in the tub. Just enjoy it. As long as, you know, there, there's there's a spectrum, right? At, at one end is maybe Phil Collins and the other is Elliot Smith. As long as you don't reach that Elliot Smith point, you're fine. Very true. Very true. <laughs> oh, the darker spectrums. Well, Because you know, there's not really a lot. I don't know why I went Phil Collins. I, I really, uh, other than the fact that I'm seeing, like, have you seen, <laughs> folks, Oh, by the way, something we didn't even do, like cool gifts that you can't get, because you know it's like, what are your, what are our printer oh, picks? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I totally forgot about that. We got to do just one little, one little public service announcement. Uh, you know, because uh, uh, Christmas is just days away. If you, if you want to get something for somebody, look. First of all, the easiest way. If you didn't get it yet and you can't get it in time, it's called a printer pick. What does that mean? It means you pick something. It's something somebody's going to like. You print a picture of it. You wrap yep. that and you say with the date of when it arrives. Because that way mm -hmm. you're like, uh, I did care enough to buy it. I just wasn't timely enough to get it to you. To get it in time. So what is yours, Trent? Um, you know what? There's there's a couple of them. Uh, uh, last year, I told my parents, uh, and I'll be honest, it was uh, out of, out of a, uh, a fact of spending too much money on the then girlfriend that I had no money left to buy my parents anything, uh, that I was getting them a, uh, you know, those ancestry.com DNA tests that you swab in your mouth and they tell you whatever lineage yeah. you have, whether, yeah, that was, that was last year. Uh, told them that's what was coming or didn't, didn't order it in time. Uh, but they're actually getting it this year. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I can actually deliver on it. I didn't all throughout last year. It was a blatant lie to them. Well, first of all, it's so good that you do that on a so I'm so glad you admit to that on a publicly broadcast pub podcast. Hey, that, you know what? Dad doesn't know how to access uh, Bitcoin. Doubt he's gonna see this. You know, don't really don't really think my brother's gonna narc me out, so we're good. It's not like he can extort me for anything. So not gonna happen. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, he's not you don't have a whole chet. Wyatt situation going on there no we're good okay good glad to hear that uh, anyway um <laughs> so 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 but, but wait a minute now hold on I, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was gonna end all this but now I gotta know no, well, let's keep it going it's like well well gosh darn it folks uh it I don't know what happened but it finally arrived here you go I mean what do you do <laughs> I, I they're wrapped and I'm gonna take them up on Monday and give them to them <laughs> I'm the youngest and kind of the black sheep and the um, underachieving of the family. So it's only to be expected. <laughs> well, you know, Trent, <laughs> I, I think the beautiful part there is this, the important message you're giving the young kids of America today, which is just, you know, accept the labels you're given yeah. and, and just accept the shortcomings that you know are there. And I embrace think it. I don't think there's any finer Christmas message to send us all out on into the holiday season. Uh, you know, folks, just just accept your limitations and and just take whatever labels yeah. you're given, pretty much. Yep, and you absolutely. know, 
just just shoot for that 60 percent uh that's about all we need 60 percent that'll it'll keep you employed there you go so until next time folks my name is will and i'm trent (laughs) there's been another edition of a netheads nagathon uh i don't know who you are that is still listening but uh (sighs) peace be with you (laughs) and and may and may whatever deity you worship have mercy on your soul (laughs) we'll be back soon thank you i uh, no, i know how it ended but i know but fuck (laughs) this is netheads with will wilkins and trent hunsaker signing off i know right but stop being a little nancy and deal with it netheads Netheads. we'll be back soon Goodbye. This has been a production of Smodco Internet Radio. Sir, only at Smodcast.com. I like that in the end, there was no real nogging at all during the Nogathon. Well, I'm sure I said this last year. I don't remember it. I don't remember at all the ending of last year's. In fact, uh, I quickly deleted the next morning afterwards of last year's that I went on Periscope live after our show ended. But I feel like I'm coherent now enough to know that I haven't made a complete ass myself. But will you will you or will you not be wearing an empty 12 pack box on your head? The great thing about that is, though, Will. You don't remember it. It's a really good container for popcorn later on.